James B. Cummy, the former FBI director, will testify publicly about his role in the investigation into Russian meddling in the election and any possible connections to the campaign of President Trump, the Senate Intelligence Committee announced Friday. Mr. Cummy's handling of the investigation, including his several conversations with Mr. Trump since his election, has taken on added importance since his dismissal and subsequent reports that the president had asked Mr. Cummy to shut down part of the inquiry, and then later called him a nut job in meetings with Russian officials. I am hopeful that he will clarify for the American people recent events that have been broadly reported in the media, said Senator Richard M. Burr, Republican of North Carolina and the chairman of the committee. Senator Mark Warner, Democrat of Virginia, said he expected Mr. Cummy to shed light on issues critical to this committee's investigation of Russian interference in the 2016 election. The announcement that Mr. Cummy would testify followed closely the disclosure by the Justice Department that Rod J. Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General, had talked with Attorney General Jeff Sessions about replacing Mr. Cummy last winter, before either man had been confirmed for his position in the Trump administration. Continue reading the main story. Related coverage. Senate inquiries narrow as Rosenstein suggests plan to fire Cummy predated memo May 18, 2017. Republicans pivot and make Cummy the capital S most wanted man May 17, 2017. Democrats escalate calls for Trump inquiry, with Republicans more reserved May 16, 2017. Mr. Rosenstein revealed that detail in two briefings to members of Congress this week, according to remarks released Friday by the Justice Department. His testimony provides fuller details about Mr. Trump's termination of the top law enforcement official investigating whether his campaign colluded with the Russian government to influence the outcome of the 2016 election. During his meetings with lawmakers, Mr. Rosenstein said that his conversations with Mr. Sessions revealed his long-held belief that Mr. Cummy should be replaced based on his public statements related to the investigation of Hillary Clinton, beginning in July 2016. Among the concerns that I recall were to restore the credibility of the FBI, respect the established authority of the Department of Justice, limit public statements and eliminate leaks, he said, echoing the sentiments he had outlined in a May 9 memo that the White House released publicly that day and cited as the basis for the firing. But on May 8 the day before Mr. Rosenstein drafted that three-page memo, he told lawmakers he had learned of Mr. Trump's intention to remove Mr. Cummy from the job. I thought it was appropriate to seek a new leader, he said expressing more direct support for the firing than he had in his more measured memo, which stopped short of endorsing a particular action but rather outlined what he called Mr. Cummy's serious mistakes and noted that any possible decision to dismiss Mr. Cummy should not be taken lightly. Mr. Trump acknowledged, in an interview with NBC News, that he had decided to fire Mr. Cummy before reading the memo by Mr. Rosenstein. The release of the testimony followed what was otherwise an unremarkable appearance before House members on Friday, the day after he briefed senators, that left many lawmakers frustrated by Mr. Rosenstein's refusal to answer questions about the investigation into Russian meddling in the election. What we did not get a clear understanding of was whether the memo was written with or without the urging of the White House, Representative G. K. Butterfield, Democrat of North Carolina, said. Rep. Seth Moulton, Democrat of Massachusetts, said there was considerable frustration among lawmakers Friday as Mr. Rosenstein declined to answer more detailed questions about the events leading to the abrupt termination. This renewed my confidence that we should not have confidence in this administration, Mr. Moulton said. Asked whether that included Mr. Rosenstein, he said, I don't think he did a lot to bolster our confidence in him. According to lawmakers and Mr. Rosenstein's prepared remarks, the Deputy Attorney General offered little clarity about how related congressional inquiries may proceed in light of Mr. Rosenstein's appointment on Wednesday of a special counsel, Robert S. Mueller III, to 
to examine the possibility of collusion between President Trump's associates and Russian officials. The fact that Mr. Mueller's inquiry is focused on possible crimes is almost certain to limit the cooperation of potential subjects of the investigation who might otherwise testify before Congress or share documents. The decision by Mr. Cummy to appear before the Intelligence Committee underscored the quandary of the competing claims between the imperatives of a special counsel and those of congressional committees. Senator Lindsey Graham Republican of South Carolina and a member of the Judiciary Committee, questioned Mr. Cummy's decision to testify, but then added that he believed he should also testify before his committee because it is oversight jurisdiction of the FBI. The same sentiments seem to be emerging in the House. Congress is going to want to look over the shoulder of this investigation, comma, said Representative Daralissa of California. A Republican who was an aggressive chairman of the House Oversight Committee during the Obama administration. The executive branch will always try to limit that for fear it will contaminate potential criminal investigations, or leaks. I don't expect this to be any different, he added. Mr. Rosenstein instead delivered careful characterizations about the inquiry and deferred to Mr. Mueller's autonomy as special counsel and a pending investigation into Mr. Cummy's conduct by the Justice Department's Inspector General. He said that his memo had not been a legal brief, or a finding of official misconduct by Mr. Cummy or a statement of reasons to justify a for cause termination. Representative Jackie Spear of California, a Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, said Friday that Mr. Rosenstein had made it clear that Mr. Mueller would have carte blanche authority, but he also reassured lawmakers that he understood the role of Congress. I think he is very respectful of the role that the Congress is playing in doing its investigation, she said, and the separate and distinct role that the Department of Justice is pursuing. Rep. Elijah E. Cummings of Maryland, the House Oversight Committee's top Democrat, said they would have no problem sitting down with Mr. Mueller to ensure the committee does not interfere in his investigation. They have a responsibility to secure a democratic process from foreign interference, he said. The Congress's role really is to look forward to make sure this does not ever happen again, Mr. Cummings said. Mr. Rosenstein signed the legal order naming Mr. Mueller special counsel on Wednesday before informing Mr. Sessions or the White House of that decision. Democrats were simultaneously heartened by the selection of a respected former FBI director and prosecutor to lead an investigation that they feared had been tarnished by Mr. Trump's interference, while also concerned about the possibility of losing their grip on the information coming out of their own investigations. Before the appointment of Mr. Mueller, House Democrats on Wednesday took procedural steps toward forcing a House vote to establish a separate, independent commission to conduct its own investigation, similar to the 9-11 Commission. With little initial Republican support even for a special counsel and the process requiring majority support from the Republican-controlled House, it is considered a long shot. But some Democrats said the briefing with Mr. Rosenstein had only reinforced the need for such an independent body. After hearing everything that was said, comma, said Rep. Adriano Espalat, Democrat of New York, there still is a need for an independent commission where the American people will be able to have more access to what happened. The New York Times has reported that Mr. Trump asked Mr. Cummy for his loyalty during a private dinner and requested he drop the investigation into Michael T. Flynn, his former national security adviser who is under scrutiny regarding his ties to Russia and Turkey. The former FBI director James Cummey is to testify in public during the U.S. inquiry into Russian interference, it has been announced, as a series of damaging revelations pile further pressure on the embattled President Donald Trump. Cummey, who was sacked by Trump on 9 May in the midst of an investigation into the President's links to Russia, is to give evidence in an open hearing of the Senate Intelligence Committee at some point after U.S. Memorial Day on 29 May, the committee announced on Friday.
The announcement came as the Washington Post reported that a White House official had been identified as a significant person of interest by the law enforcement investigation into links between Russia and the Trump election campaign. The New York Times, quoting a U.S. official, reported that Trump told Russian officials in the Oval Office this month that firing Comey had relieved great pressure on him, as he labeled the former FBI chief a real nut job. The president's spokesman did not deny the report, but said Comey had made it harder for the U.S. to engage with Russia. Trump, who arrived in Saudi Arabia on Saturday for an official visit, has called media coverage of his ill-edged links to Russia, and his apparent subsequent efforts to stifle the FBI investigation, as the single greatest witch hunt of a politician in American history. The president's administration has been dogged by claims of being too close to the Russian government since their alleged interference in the 2016 election. It has been claimed that Trump himself revealed highly confidential intelligence to Russian officials in the Oval Office. Trump stepped off Air Force One in Riyadh on Saturday morning to begin his first international trip since taking office. The president, accompanied by the First Lady, Melania Trump, was greeted by King Salman. They shook hands and Trump said it was a great honor to be there. Soon after, Trump tweeted for the first time on international soil as president. Great to be in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Looking forward to the afternoon and evening ahead. At a ceremony in the royal court, the king placed the Order of Abdulaziz Al Saud Medal, the nation's highest civilian honor, around Trump's neck. Given to Trump for his efforts to strengthen ties in the region, the gold medal has also been bestowed on his predecessor, Barack Obama, the Russian President, Vladimir Putin, and the British Prime Minister, Theresa May. The king and president were overheard discussing natural resources and arms, and the king bemoaned the destruction caused by Syria's civil war. The White House Chief of Staff, Rians Priebus told reporters that Trump spent the flight talking to staff, working on his upcoming speech to the Muslim world and getting a little sleep. Confirming come yes appearance, the committee chairman, Senator Richard Burr, said, the committee looks forward to receiving testimony from the former director on his role in the development of the intelligence community assessment on Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. elections and I am hopeful that he will clarify for the American people recent events that have been broadly reported in the media. Senator Mark Warner, the vice chairman, said he hoped the testimony will help answer some of the questions that have arisen since Director Cummy was so suddenly dismissed by the president. He deserves an opportunity to tell his story Comma Warner said in the joint statement. Moreover, the American people deserve an opportunity to hear it. However, Cummy declined an invitation from the Senate Judiciary Committee which asked him to testify voluntarily about the circumstances of his firing and his interactions with officials from the Trump and Obama administrations relating to the Russia and Hillary Clinton investigations. Senators Chuck Grassley and Dianne Feinstein, the chairman and ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, said in a joint statement they were disappointed by Cummie's decision and there was no reason he couldn't testify before both committees. Given his commitment to the people and the mission of the FBI, we expected him to be responsive to the senators responsible for vetting its next proposed leader, comma, they said. He should reconsider his decision. Grassley later cast doubt on whether the Intelligence Committee testimony would take place, suggesting in a tweet that the special counsel brought in to take over the Russia investigation, Robert Mueller, may stop coming appearing. While there is no precedent to the current situation, it's possible Mueller would object to Cummy speaking in public about an ongoing investigation. Senator Lindsey Graham said on Thursday that the appointment of a special counsel meant Congress's ability to conduct investigations of all things Russia has been severely limited. He questioned whether witnesses would testify to Congress and risk incriminating themselves in Mueller's criminal investigation. The White House initially attributed the firing to Cummie's controversial handling of the investigation into Clinton's email server, while Democrats and the press immediately suspected an effort to disrupt the fierce Russia investigation.
Trump subsequently said in an interview with NBC News that this Russia thing factored into his decision. Many Democratic lawmakers and a handful of Republicans have suggested that the firing could constitute obstruction of justice. On Wednesday, the New York Times reported that Trump had urged Comey to drop his investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. The report also revealed the fact that Comey had written memos describing his interactions with Trump, which he believed were inappropriate. Jason Chaffetz, the chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, has asked the FBI, PDF, to turn the memos over to the committee. Comey has not spoken publicly since the firing, beyond a farewell letter to the FBI in which he wrote that he was not going to spend time on the decision, to fire him or the way it was executed. The substance of some of his memos has been leaked, however, and on Thursday Benjamin Witts, a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution and editor of the blog Lawfare, spoke to the New York Times and published a blog post with more details about the strained relationship between Trump and Cummy. Witts is a personal friend of Cummy's. He described Cummy as being disgusted by Trump's efforts to gain his loyalty and establish a personal relationship, which Cummy considered inappropriate. Responding to the New York Times report, Press Secretary Sean Spicer said, As the President has stated before a thorough investigation will confirm that there was no collusion between the campaign and any foreign entity. 